evening, everyone. Today, I'm going to interview one of the most famous social psychologists, Stanley Milgram. Good evening. Welcome, Milgram. It's a pleasure to see you here. Pleasure is mine. Well, Milgram, could you please talk about the experiment that you carry out? Of course. The experiment that I carried out was called the Obedience Experiment and it was conducted on May 1962 at Yale University. And why did you conduct it? To begin with, I conducted this experiment because when I learned incidents such as the massacre of World War II where Nazis killed thousands of thousands of people, I asked myself, how was it possible that ordinary people can act inhumanity even to the point to kill another human being? And how did you do it to carry out an experiment? Well, in the experiment there are three main characters the student, the teacher, and the experimenter. We gathered some participants, all of them were men from 20 to 50 years old, who were paid $4 with 50 cents. Those participants were told that they would be part of a learning and memory experiment and that they would play the role of a teacher. Wow, that's great! Like, you know, we have already prepared a video of the experiment, so to make clear for the audience, let's watch it. It is May 1962, and the experiment is being conducted at the Elegant Interaction Laboratory at Yale University. To a learning and memory experiment, we are randomly chosen to be a teacher. Please take a seat. Good. Psychologists have developed many theories to explain why people learn. Good. One theory is that people learn things correctly when they get punished for making a mistake. Right. Okay, shall we proceed to the laboratory? Alright. Here is a list of work pair which okay. have been learned and memorized by the student who is in the next room. You have to ask a few questions to a student. First, read one of the work pair, and the student must answer your questions. If he answers correctly, you just keep asking questions. On the other hand, if he doesn't give you correct answer, you must give him electric shocks by pressing his buttons. Oh, I see. The electric shocks are from 15 volts to a maximum of 415 volts. All right, all right. Okay, let's begin. Okay, the first question is blue, number two. That is correct. The next question is man, number four. That is incorrect, 15 volts. Oh. The next question is small, number three. That is incorrect again. This time will be 75 volts. Ouch, it really hurts. Excuse me, the student is suffering. Please continue. The electric shocks are painful but not dangerous. Sorry, man. We have to proceed. The next question is tall. Number one. Sorry, it is growing again. I have to give him now 180 volts. Continue, please. The experiment requires that you continue. 180 volts now. Ouch! I can't stand the pain. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. Please continue. The next question is shine. Please answer. Let me out of here. My heart is bothering me. I have a heart disease. Let me out of here. Let me out of here. That's it. That's it. I will not kill that man. Who is going to take the responsibility of that? I am responsible for it. Please, it is absolutely essential that you continue. But... but... Sorry, man. Please answer your question. Otherwise, I have to give you an electric shock. I told you, my heart is bothering me now. I refuse to answer the question. Get me out of here. Get me out of here. Are you sure that you are going to take the responsibility of that? 
Yes, the responsibility is mine. Please continue. <sighs> 210 volts now. Oh, get me out of here. You can't hold me here. I'm not part of this experiment anymore. The next question. Expensive. Expensive. I repeat, expensive. Please, answer the question. Please. Are you right? Are you right? It's pretty better. He even doesn't answer the question. Maybe it's something wrong with him. You have to check it. He is right. You have no other choice but to continue. <sighs> this time will be 450 volts. Yes, so to explain it, I have to tell you that all the participants were deceived. The student and the experimenter were just actors, and the lecture shocks were screams recorded and played by a record. So it means that the student actually never received any electric shock. But, Mirabel, you know, it was unethical. They were totally deceived. Yes, totally true. However, after the experiment finished, all participants were told the truth about the experiment, and they knew that this experiment was not a memory and learning experiment, but an evidence experiment. And surprisingly, 84% of all participants were happy for being part of it. I didn't expect that. Most of them were happy to do that. And here go. How were the results? The results were surprising because at the beginning it was predicted that just a few people will continue until the end of the experiment, perhaps 3 out of 100 people. And those who will continue until the end of the experiment are those who have psychological problems. However, 65% of all participants delivered the final electroshock. Even though most participants became angry at the experimenter for doing so, they continued following the orders from the experimenter all the way to the end. And after seeing those results, what were your conclusions of the experiment? Well, I conclude that ordinary people tend to follow orders from an authority who has a certain level of power over them, even though if those orders go against their will of if this implies to hurt another human being. Wow, that was an amazing experiment. Thank you so much for coming here. Good. I believe the audience have already had a clear idea of your experiment. Alright, that's the end of this show. Thank you so much. See you next time.